We're covering a lot of important wide receivers on today's episode. Some elder statemen. How are they going to perform next year? Some young up-and-comers and a lot of quarterback problems. You don't want to miss a minute. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Tuesday, February 6th, heading towards the Super Bowl. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Gentlemen. Yes. How we doing? I was waiting for a start your engines, but <laughs> okay. What? No, the, like a uh, gentleman. No, no, I, I start your engine. I understand. Yeah, as I'm aware of the phrase, but your your word association for gentleman when is said start, like that in that it's particular. A, I think it was the tone. It was it was the beginning of gentlemen. Speak, speaking of tone, start your engine. We just caught. Um, we did a live podcast <laughs> back in toronto canada yeah. yeah yeah which was brooks do you know what year that was probably uh, 19 check. no that would have been 18 maybe 18 yeah i think back in 18 18, 18 or earlier yeah and i pulled this thing up because we we're, were reviewing the places we've been with the podcast we, we needed a list of the live event for for something and we see toronto and then we pull it up and jason's voice is super high well i was i was up north like so, what? What I, has know, happened to your voice? You, you have a much deeper voice now. Yeah, if you you should have heard me is in it the Colombia smoking? when I was in South America, oh. I was I was down here, guys. So this is uh, proximity to the North Pole. That's to exactly the, right. Uh, to the equator. What is uh, well, it? The it deepest be, no, at the equator? Higher to the yeah. No, no. Like if he went to the the South Pole, oh, it would it would be inaudible. Correct. Oh, a, a, low, a register that's so yeah, low well, you well, can't well. hear. Like it. Shaq. Yes, Shaq would be me at the South Pole. What is it was happening? It was August of 2017. Wow. No, I just, you 2017? know. 2017? Yeah. Start your engines. That's all, right. all I'm saying. That's, yeah. We have a truth episode today, the wide receiver part two episode. We've covered the quarterbacks. We've covered the running backs. All of those episodes, I encourage everybody listening, if you didn't catch them, go back, give them a listen. You'll find out the reality of a number of the highest draft picks at each of those positions what the truth was about their consistency, how they performed against good and bad defenses, um, home road splits. Did they actually help you win a championship? And I think we'll do some more. We'll be uh, we'll be sharing a breakdown of the most consistent players at every position as well on social media. I encourage you to follow us on X at the FF Ballers. We're on Instagram. We're on uh, TikTok. Yeah, we are. And uh, we'll be sharing more truth information there. Did you have something to add, Jason? I or? just found how you said TikTok. Very... I, sa I said it like an old man. Yeah, you did. Yeah. All right. The emphasis on the... On the TikTok. The... Oh, man. Yeah. I That's mean, rough. I am not as old as you guys. That's just important. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yet? Yeah. That's right. Um, <laughs> but the truth episode... I don't think ever... Is uh, I could die first, Mike. So, <laughs> well, wait, is that the path to get me older than you? Well, yeah, right. I mean, wait a minute. Yeah, if, if you, you lived to sixty and I lived to fifty, you got older than me. Okay, but your is, corpse will all. I mean, that's still ages. My doesn't corpse it? does not age. <laughs> but I start over now. But, I'm. But hold on. I'm one oh, day. You're old one day corpse. as a corpse. Yeah. But, but people always put up the the tweets of, you know, so and so. It's their, oh, it's their birthday. They would have been yeah. 72. Mm, right. You're saying that that doesn't count? I'm saying I would have, but I'm not. He has a point. Could have, should have, would have. Right. He has a point because if he's 50 and he dies at 50, right? Yeah. And he's got a 50-year-old corpse. And I live to 60 and I die. And then my corpse is next to him. And then somebody goes and digs up those corpses. I'm the older corpse. That's how you get older is death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's all so clear. 
It's all so clear. <laughs> we have started our engines, fellas. <laughs> five days. Five days until the ultimate draft kit pre-sale. Super Bowl Sunday. The Dynasty Pass will be available immediately if you pick up the UDK+. Plus. Very excited about this year. Um, the newer app is going to be available very, very soon uh, ahead of Super Bowl Sunday so you can get all primed up and ready to go. But the pre-sale starts uh, this Sunday, UDK time. UltimateDraftKit.com. Head over there. Pick it up. You won't regret it. And uh, what else is going on? We got a quick question, Brooksy? Oh, yeah. All right. YouTube. Super Bowl time. Super Bowl time. At Braden uh, Holstead, 1814. That, see, that's an old guy. Yeah. 1814. That was a long time ago. Wow. I have Mahomes and Purdy in a one quarterback dynasty league. Should I trade one of them? Which one? And what should I be trying to get for them? So uh, my answer would be probably not. Um, because in a one quarterback dynasty league, it's trading a quarterback is very difficult. Now, guys, the higher end guys, yes, they're in demand. But will you, act, will you find a perfect match for a team that's willing to overpay, uh, or even just pay what what you think you should get for someone like Patrick Mahomes? And it's it's dynasty, man. This year especially, if you were in a dynasty league and you didn't have a backup option, you look look around your league at how many teams just got ruined because of quarterback injury this year and in, they're not just readily available on the waiver wire yeah the backup you know like Jake Browning was probably on the waiver wire after Joe Burrow got hurt but even in some dynasty leagues those guys are rostered uh as well any any backup quarterback that you feel somewhat confident in they're on roster so I look at it that you, you the market won't give you the value that you should get for these players, that they the, the impact they can have on a starting roster, and the security of needing two quarterbacks. I usually like to have three, if at all possible. So I'm probably not trading either of these guys. Do you do you agree with that, Jay? Because I would actually – I'd be on the other side. I would try to trade Brock Purdy. If I were to trade one of them, it would certainly be Brock Purdy. I, I don't feel like you're trading Patrick Mahomes near the value that you should get for Patrick Mahomes. Like uh, – Obviously, his name carries a lot of weight. You could still get something good, it's but like, but what can you even get for well, Brock Purdy? Let's say he wins the Super Bowl this this Sunday. Yeah, that that's probably you know you're talking peak value for a young quarterback a young quarterback like that. You could probably move him for a less heralded backup and something, and that would be the place I'd want to be because you you know I understand having two quarterbacks is very crucial, but I I think you could go get another name. You know, last offseason, you could have traded a lot for – like Trevor Lawrence looked like the trajectory was really good. The value on Trevor Lawrence now is much lower than it was last year. So I would – I'd be happy to move laterally in what I believe is production at, at quarterback two backup if I could cash in on Brock Purdy's peak. Right, but but trading in a one quarterback – Would you trade? It's just the – I got a trade for you. Okay, one sec. But okay. In a one quarterback, who – who in your league doesn't have a starting quarterback who is I mean, like Brooks? I mean, Brooks is in our dynasty league. He spent the whole year without a quarterback. He, he has 14 on his roster. Russ was his at the start of the year. I mean, I would be shooting for that team that's been let down by the trust that was put into Trevor Lawrence or the trust that was put into somebody else and wants the new hotness. And Brock Purdy, you know, he's not going to get a long term deal after this season because they literally it's can't illegal. do it. Yeah. Um, so his that means he's got to play another full year without a guarantee, which is scary because it's San Francisco. They rotated rotated through people, but like here's an example. Yeah, give me some names, and I, I'll just throw it out there. You tell me if it's stupid. Would you trade Brock Purdy away if he's your two? Okay, for Baker Mayfield and a second round draft pick. Um, I would not. You'd rather have Brock Purdy? I I would. Yeah. Okay. Brock Purdy's twenty four. Uh, I think he's going to have a long-term Would you trade theater. Brock Purdy away for Trevor Lawrence? I'm just curious. Oh, that's interesting. That is a fascinating question. Because um, I, I would assume, based on this last year, you could do that. And you could probably get a third-round, second-round pick with oh Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> I don't know that you're going to get plus, but I would rather have Trevor Lawrence. 
So, <laughs> you know, I that, don't know, man. That's the way I'd be thinking, though, is is maybe Baker's not the name that matters to I, you. I think your point in in who's going to trade for Brock Purdy says that you're not doing a quarterback. It's not going to be for Baker or for Love or for Trevor Lawrence. It's going to be this is a quarterback needy team. They're desperate for it. You're finding the team that doesn't have a quarterback. So really, you're trading Brock Purdy away for uh, would a you give up a wide receiver. Would you give up a late first for Brock Purdy in your situation in Dynasty, Brooks? Can I tell you after the Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I mean. If he wins the Super Bowl. Yeah, if he wins the Super Bowl, the then you're saying you probably would, right? I, like, I'd consider it. It's, yeah. been, it's been a tough ride for me. <laughs> if it, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. If, if I could unload Brock for a first, which I don't think you could do in most situations – but if I could for a first, and I've got Mahomes, I would. Well, be here we are pretending Brooks has any picks. That's true. He yeah, have but picks. just the the point being, like in our twelve person team, there's essentially Elite. one. There's like one trade partner, and meaning that no one really has the leverage. So, and, and to your point, is don't force a trade. Correct. He's going to be of great yes. value to your team because players get injured, and you need more than one quarterback. Don't force it. Yeah. But in my opinion, this might be the moment. Where if someone is searching for one, you would cash in. Mahomes is the one you want long term. You know those things are going to ebb and flow from a good season to a medium season. But yeah. like Mahomes is who you want. Yeah, I, w I would love to trade Mahomes for another star plus a first. You can do that some years. You're not doing that the year that he's. You know he was the quarterback eight this year. Uh, he'll he'll be. You know the the previous three years he was a top five quarterback. The, the last year was the quarterback one. Wait for another outstanding season, and then you can get a haul. Then you know, then you're trading Mahomes for, um, you know, a, a really really good, you know, for Herbert and a one, or Burrow and a one, or uh, you know, Stroud and a one after Stroud shows that he's worth it, something like that. All right, I'm not gonna hit the drop. I'm just gonna give you some quick news before I get into the truth. Cliff Kingsbury uh, was hired and then not hired. He's by back. The well, he was he the was the leading yes uh, candidate to get hired by the Raiders, yeah, and then he re he removed his name. Yeah, and he did because according to the report, because Washington called him yep. right before he signed it and said, "Hey, we're actually going to sign you." And so Cliff Kingsbury is the new offensive coordinator of the Washington Commanders, who pick at number two, which has caused the entire earth to begin to question whether they will yep. get Caleb Williams at two now because Cliff was Caleb Williams' offensive coordinator at USC. I don't really read too much into that. I think Caleb Williams is going number one, but we'll find out. He still could go number one. Yeah, that you're right. Oh Washington man, could trade if for the it. Bears, if the Bears get the Manders to go up to one, it could happen. Yeah, that that seems like not even an unlikely scenario. Oh, the Saints have hired Clint Kubiak as their offensive coordinator. Coops, run the ball. The Raiders hired. Luke Getze to be their offensive coordinator after being spurned by Cliff Kingsbury. And the Chargers are looking to hire Greg Roman, which I want to talk about this for a second. Okay. We had the hiring of Jim Harbaugh. And then we went back and looked at how much the 49ers ran the football with Jim Harbaugh. And then you look at what Michigan did, right? They were one of the lowest passing offenses yep. in, in, at the college level. Then you look at the hiring of Greg Roman. Oh, what man. does Greg Roman like to do? Run the ball. Run the football. And then I have seen some interest, some rumors, some rumblings in the bushes. Saquon Barkley to Los Angeles. Ooh. Because okay. to be, you know, we talked about the reason he did that with San Francisco. You know, it's chicken or egg, right? Like you had Frank Gore to hand the ball off to all of those years. And, and a and running quarterback. Kaepernick, yeah. yeah, I was going to say Kaepernick, a quarterback with, with, uh, Frank Gore, it was using your personnel, but obviously if you've got a system you want to run, go you get need, the personnel. You need personnel. So it was the first potential destination for Saquon where you'd be like, I'm very in on that because it would be heavy usage. It'd be an offense that's built to do it. And, you know, most of the time we want these guys going back to where they're workhorses. I'd prefer Saquon in Los Angeles than I would New York. Oh, for sure. Because if Saquon goes to Los Angeles – that is a replacement of Eckler. They're not going to sign Eckler and then add Saquon. Correct. So now you you have him in a workhorse situation for a much better offense, much better quarterback. Speaking of the quarterback and, and Greg Roman coming on board, we don't know what role Greg Roman is going to be hired in, but uh, apparently he's coming on board. But my first thought was the rushing ability of Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert is an athletic, 
you know, yeah. uh, quarterback yeah, who like has he comes not to Josh Allen athletically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Athletically, he's close to Josh Allen, but he's capped himself at 302 rushing yards in his career. And I think that you could see a lot more utilization of his legs as a strength. Um, and that's exciting for fantasy purposes. I got a sidebar over here, guys, because I was, uh, I wanted to make a, a Jim Harbaugh khakis joke, and but I like I didn't know if he actually wears pleated khakis because I was going to go hard. Which in the is paint. important for the joke. Oh, it's important for the joke. Like that was that was the the crux of the joke. Okay. So I just searched, you know, Jim Harbaugh khakis. There's some evidence of of pleats pleats, pleats and things like that. But then there's also the people also ask. Where does Jim Harbaugh buy his pants? And there's an article. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's sourced that Jim, that he gets his khakis from that's, Walmart. That's when you from know Walmart. But I'm like, who? Why is this on the internet? Why are we putting up articles about where Jim Harbaugh buys his khakis? It's when you know you've made it, man. <laughs> Good job, Jim. Uh, back according to uh, our research department. Led by Kyle the Borgogan. Back in <gasps> oh, this is a big update. Back in 2016, Jim Harbaugh made the switch from his traditional pleated khakis yeah. to Lulu Lemon's oh, men's pants. I was just going to compliment his thriftiness, but if he's a Lula, Lula Lemon man now, that's he's the opposite of thriftiness. Yeah, he is, he is throwing money in the garbage. Well, he's very wealthy. <laughs> um, I wonder if that was a conversation. Like somebody came up to him one day and was like, it's time. All right, let's jump into the truth. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! All right. Wide receivers, part two. Last week on the first episode, we discussed the top ten. CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek Hill, Amon Ross St. Brown, Puka Nakua, Mike Evans, DJ Moore, A.J. Brown, and Devontae Smith. Keenan Allen, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs. We classify, when we're looking at consistency at this position, we classify them into great games, good games, or bust games. Great games are 20 or more points. Good games, 12 and a half or more. Bust games, fewer than seven and a half. So we're going to begin with the Raiders because Devontae Adams comes in at number 11, and we can have a brief discussion about Jacoby Myers as well. But Adams at 11, drafted as the wide receiver, 8, 31 years old. First half consistency was an abysmal 47. It now, was rough. the second half was 13, including a uh, – I want to give him credit for a league-winning Week 17 performance. Sure. In fact, number 8, number 2, two of the three weeks for the playoff weeks, 175 targets. But as you said, the first half of this year was really, really difficult. 175 and, targets, and he caught 103 of them. Yeah, and he went through different quarterbacks to do it. Yeah, the first seven weeks were Jimmy Garoppolo. So when you see these splits, uh, you know, Jacoby Myers, much, much better in the first half. He was getting those, you know, short, nice targets from Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, it was better for Devontae Adams when Garoppolo said sayonara or – he wasn't the one that said it. <laughs> He's, well, he may still have said goodbye. That's true. That's true. Do Thank you, you say sayonara when being being pushed out of a van? <laughs> Is that you I don't can. think you. I think I don't you usually think, scream it. I think yeah. you scream it. Look, he, here's what I want to point out though, because Adams finished at 11, right? Was drafted as the wide receiver eight. Jacoby Myers finished at 24. Was the wide receiver 58 off the board, almost undrafted. However, in consistency, on the year, Jacoby Myers had a consistency rank of 20, whereas Adams was 25. So the fantasy finish, pretty big gap between 11 and 24, but Myers was more consistent. In fact, like you said, in the first half, number nine, that's crazy. Like, if you drafted or picked up Jacoby Myers off the waiver wire and you had the courage to put him out there, it was very beneficial in the first half of the year. Mm -hmm. Tailed off in the second half, uh, almost – what, 70 fewer targets? Yeah, Aiden O'Connell did not like throwing it to Jacoby Myers. So, you know, when you look at the year for Devontae Adams, I'm not going to go as far as to say this was a bust year. Drafted at wide receiver eight, finished at 11. But it's close. It, it was a up-and-down roller coaster year, and he's one of those players that you were stuck playing because he's Devontae Adams. So 
bust is too strong a word for me, but disappointment. That's fair. Is probably where I'd put him. I traded for him uh, partway through the season, ho- expecting you know the classic Devontae Adams to reappear. Kind of did at times, but quarterback consistency, it was obvious that that was the major issue. Yeah, and it, I don't see the quarterback consistency changing necessarily going forward. I, mean, I know that there are some rumors, maybe Russell Wilson goes there, um, but Russell Wilson is not the answer to the problem here. And for me, Devontae Adams, he's going to be – you know, he's he's 31 years old now. He is on the downward slope. This was obviously a down year from the year prior. And I think that we have looked over year after year after year after year. When you get towards the end, I'm not saying that it's over and it's done. He's toast. It's, it's all busted. But it doesn't go back up. It doesn't usually go like, oh, I, I dipped down at 31 but resurged at 32. So to me, I don't see him as someone that I'm going to be investing heavily in next year. And his name is still so big. It, it, it would surprise me if he's you know outside the top 15 wide receivers. I think the quarterback is going to be so important for Devontae Adams. I mean, the, at the last two years, the, the targets have been there, enough target to overcome a terrible catch percentage where – the last four years, his catch percentage were 78-73 in Green Bay. Goes to Las Vegas, 56 and 59%. I mean, that's Oof. that's a that's the quarterback. And his splits against, you know, top half and bottom half defenses, against top half defenses, he didn't even average nine points a game. It was really beating the crap out of inferior opponents. And to me, that's more it's a signal of that's just quarterback. Like his the the quarterback wasn't capable of of matching up against stronger opponents. So if if it's Aiden O'Connell could get better over the offseason if somehow he is the starter, or maybe they go out in free agency. But that is that will be a huge point in my analysis of whether or not I'm in at the ADP of Devontae. I wanted to look at this because it just you know anecdotally, when Pierce took over as the head coach. It felt like it was better for Adams, and he okay. took over. He took over. Was this? He started. He coached week nine. Okay, is that right, Kyle? So from that point on, his pace was 183 targets, 100 receptions, 1100 yards, and nine touchdowns. Well, I mean, he, yeah, he got. But the consistency there. rank was very good. He had double digit targets in five games in that span. Um. You know, to that, at least with the head coach coming back in Pierce, maybe you can get one high target year out of Adams again, regardless of the quarterback. But to your point, Jason, is he going to be a top 15 pick? Are you taking, you know, an older Mike Evans with Baker? Are you taking Devontae Adams with insert blank quarterback here? That, that'll that be, I think, a tough call for people. I, I kind of lean Adam or um, Evans. Yeah, Evans obviously had the better year this year, and because of the the history of Devontae Adams, I would expect Devontae Adams to be drafted over Evans next okay. year. All right, we will take a quick break and come back with uh, another pair of receivers that finished very close on the same team. Well, let's talk about him. Number 12. No. This is, um, you know, b- believe it or not, we don't sit around like staring at the fantasy finish of all the players. So occasionally on these truth episodes, we get, I mean, Jason, you you probably knew that Debo is sitting here at 12, but mm-hmm. I'm a little surprised. Like Debo, I am too. Debo's at 12, Ayuk is 14. So we'll talk about both of them here. But uh, Debo had 20 – they both had about the same percentage of great games, 21% for Debo, 20% for Ayuk. 57% good, 60% for Ayuk. 21% bust for Debo, only 13% for Ayuk. So consistency-wise, no surprise, Ayuk was two spots better. He was number six. Debo was number eight. I mean – They were both great. The TLDR there is like if you drafted either player, you were thrilled. You got a value, right? Thir- late third for Debo. Super value for Ayuk in the six. Yeah, Ayuk was definitely the better pick. If if you experienced Debo, got off to a hot start, had a bad stretch, then got injured, so you had a 
you had a really hard time with him in the middle of the year. When he came back, he was on fire. So oh, hopefully man. you 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 know uh, held the course and just waited for him to get back after the bye week. But both these guys were great. Um, there's a reason they're in the Super Bowl. Brock Purdy was able to do enough. The offensive system is good, and both players are so talented. I've never seen someone catch all of his deep targets like Brandon Ayuk does. Just if, if there's a target down the field, I feel like he's coming down with it. He's uh, you know going forward. I don't know how you doubt either one of these guys. The continuity is going to be there with pretty much the same offensive group next season, and they've just they've proven that. Um, they are super talented individuals, and they are in an offensive system that knows how to, you know, maximize them. To me, the the biggest challenge with, I don't know, letting Brandon and I graduate to a different place in our fantasy vision is the quant, you know, the the seventy five catch number, right? Where, you know, the target totals are not, and and maybe you believe they could change, but I don't think in this system they will. Like I think. This is kind of the best kind of year you're going to get from Brandon Ayuk. He's actually one of the players that, you know, we joke about Tyreek Hill. How every time he catches the football, he's super open. To me, the second the second player that comes to mind with that is the way they scheme Brandon Ayuk. These play actions, you see Purdy roll to the right, and then you look downfield, and Ayuk is open by 15 yards sometimes, um, going across the middle of the field. I don't think 100 t uh, receptions is in the future for Brandon Ayuk in this system in San Francisco. I think you accept a big play guy that's in the 70 to 80 range, but that might make him a little more touchdown dependent year to year. Yeah, you have two years now of Brandon Ayuk being great. Uh, one fewer game this year than 2022, but so the targets went down slightly from 114 to 105. Again, one extra game would have had that really, really close. The reception, 78 or 75. Oh, interesting. But, but the yardage, 1,015 yards and eight touchdowns in 2022, 1,342 yards and seven touchdowns this past year. So the big play was working. What was the catch percentage year to year? Was it the uh, same? You had 68% in 22 and 71 this past year. So I mean, he's, all he's the numbers, a star. Yeah, he, he is. But that's the the – the question coming into this year was, was the breakout for real? I think that's answered. Now the question will become, with near, like, really, really similar peripherals of your targets and your catches and your catch percentage, but over 300 yards extra off of, uh, off of those opportunities, that's where you have to take a, take a step back and go, is this, will he end up getting overdrafted? because of this like could there really actually be a next step or is this or or does the fantasy community say no Brandon Ayuk is a like a high level wide receiver too let's say Debo's drafted a round and a half ahead of Brandon Ayuk I'll take the last 49er drafted of these pair of this pair I think I would still be on the Debo side. Would I know, you? Yeah, okay. I, I worry okay. a little bit on the injury risk, but the the consistency, the fact that they manufacture touches for him, and you don't have to worry about a big play coming through because to to have seventeen point nine yards per catch and be over seventy percent catch rate, which is what Ayuk did, it shows That's two wild. things. It shows two things. One, it shows he's really really good. So I don't want to take anything away from him, but also. That's just impossible. Like you can't do that year after year. That's that's a wild stat. So you you would uh, if they're that close. I mean, this year there's a big gap, two and a half rounds. But if it's a, if it's a round, yeah, if it's a round difference, I I think I still prefer Debo with his rushing attempts. You know, it's it's one yeah. of those things where when when they get five up rushing in the game, touchdowns, you, you're still going to hand the ball off to Debo. And yet, Ayuk two spots better in consistency. It's surprising. I wondered if we had the consistency rank from last year for these two. Do you, do you know it? Uh, I think I can Ooh, look that up. We have it. Debo 23, Ayuk 30. Wow, they both took such a big step up. Is that true, Brooks? Yes, sir. Wow. Were they both banged up last year? I guess it wouldn't have even mattered. Yeah. Hmm. But strong second half. All right, at 13, Jamar Chase. I think a lot of people were... Sad. That's a word. Yep. I think a lot of people Distraught. were... Distraught. Mm-hmm. Depressed. I think a lot of people were. 
upset. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> I was looking for something bigger. Yeah, you were really, you were on a roll. Uh, I couldn't wait for the, the run. Of here's the thing. Catatonic. I tuned out. I thought the bit was over. <laughs> but you were in the bit. You were I, part of the bit. You, you decide when it's. Bit. I was getting ready for analysis. Jokey like, joke time was done. Um, This is a bad year. He was drafted in the top uh, three. <laughs> the top, the top. Well, the top. I, look, I, I, I actually just caught um, some discussions we had. Before the season, um, someone had shared part of. Uh, we went on the Green Light Show with uh, Chris Long. Mm, yep, and uh, great podcast. And we went on there, and we were talking about the consensus in the first round, and then when people were starting to depart from it. And the beginning, the first four picks, it was CMC, uh, Jefferson, Chase, and Eckler in some order. Generally, maybe Tyreek Hill was mixed in there, but like. Chase was drafted to be a bona fide guarantee for your roster. Yeah. Just plain and simple, he wasn't. One third great, one third good, one third bust. Consistency of 23, got worse in the second half. Joe Burrow went away. Burrow was much worse in the second half. Yeah. 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 And no um, fantasy points. So, you know, Jamar Chase, I think, I think there will be some people that are very. Like, they're biting their nails when they have to draft Jamar Chase next year. I don't know if they'll be us. It won't be me. That's for darn sure. But it is hard. it's hard when you go through a year like this where he was on the field and didn't produce. That's what I think is, is hard for people. Now, we, we know that when Joe Burrow is back behind center, it, it's going to transform the output. So I'll be in on Jamar Chase, but it's a matter of, like, perception. Yeah, I mean, you, you – Like, Tyreek's going to go ahead of him, right? You've got Burrow – yeah, well, Tyreek – probably should go ahead of him burrow um essentially stopped playing week 12 from week 12 on jamar chase would have had a 17 game pace of 80 receptions for a thousand yards and two touchdowns like it, it, i mean if you've got a backup quarterback throwing you the ball it's going to be a massive problem i i don't think that we saw anything from jamar chase to make me believe that he isn't the awesome dude uh, incredible wide receiver that he's been since he's been in the nfl and prior this was you know the very beginning of the season you had a hurt burrow say that joe burrow was basically a backup quarterback for the first month his his first good game was week five against arizona and to highlight that joe burrow three of his first four games did not hit nine fantasy points as a quarterback so and we're blaming the calf I yeah I am. So it, the fact that it happened though, I can't imagine. You know, Jefferson will go above him, right? Yes, for yeah. sure. Um, Tyreek will go above him. I think so. Ceedee Lamb will go above him. Yes. Amon Ross St. Brown. I don't think so. You think that's the line? I, Puka I, Nakua. No, I, I think right after right after those guys, number four will be Jamar Chase. Okay. So yeah, kind of a lost year for Jamar Chase. We know the talent. Uh, we know what he's capable of. And it was just boom bust this year with the quarterback situation. He's always one play away, and and you're from winning have, you a week. You're presumably going to have T Higgins gone. So going into next year, when you when you're saying he is going to be able to be, you know, the uh, the alpha and the omega there at the wide will receiver, it, will it hurt him not to have somebody on the other side? Because it feels like feels like it could be difficult. I mean, I if it just depends on if you really believe Jamar Chase is in that level of you know of, of CD Lamb of Justin Jefferson. I I think he is, but he, you still need a quarterback that can get you the ball. If if Dak Prescott went down this year, CD Lamb would yeah. not have had a great breakout season. And it just Jamar Chase, he, it's his highs are so high. Like it, it's a. When Jamar Chase hits, it's a week that it's three touchdowns. It's like you could have benched the rest of your team yeah. and maybe still won. The, like, like Tyreek. Yeah. But he, it his whole career has still had inconsistent like not just a game on, game off, like a few games in a row where you're like, Where the heck is Jamar Chase? And then he comes back with it and gives you a week winning performance. So he, he the the those other names that we the rattled off. I well, mean, that is where Amon Ra is so different. Yes. Yeah. But the but the highs of Amon Ra are not what Jamar can give you. Yeah, they manufactured targets for Jamar with the backups because 24.8% of his targets were behind the line of scrimmage. Oh, man. That, <laughs> the one week with Browning 
where it was just like nonstop, but it was all screens. Like, this Brutal. Is, this is not winning football. All right, let's uh, let's change gears here. Oh, I hit it, but no. Oh. Let's change gears here. You don't have a drop over there. Same one. I figured Mike, it worked. Sorry. Would you mind no. doing this one on your own? What? Oh, just yeah, just with your what? mouth. I've never done this one. We built this city. Thank you. That <laughs> uh, was your backup. Thank you. You're welcome. It does not have the impact. Michael Pittman at 15 was drafted as the wide receiver. Oh. 35. Michael Pittman was my most reluctant pick in our league of record draft. When we did it, it was like me and Kyle and, and Damon were like, you know, I should we do this? Like, yeah, I guess so. And then we just kind of sheepishly we'll, we'll take Michael Pittman. Here, here's because this is my only responsibility on this show. I think we got really lucky with Michael Pittman this year. Me, maybe. Because this is one of the best value draft picks you could have made. Wide receiver 35 turns into wide receiver 15. His consistency rank was 15. I mean, this is one of the best wide receiver twos you could have. 6% great games, but 44% good, only 19% bus, and had a plethora of targets. 156 targets, yes. 109 receptions, 1,100 yards, just four touchdowns. I think we got lucky with Michael Pittman because we were we were given Gardner Minshew so soon this season. Because we the reason he was a seventh round pick, a late seventh round pick, was in part because we knew we had we had a significant doubts around volume. Yes. It wasn't talent, it wasn't the ability that he could put up a season like this. It was just will they give him a chance to? And we didn't know what Shane Steichen would do in his first opportunity. Yep. Steichen and Minshew outkicked the expectations. Yeah, yeah, they did. I, one thing though that I I I think Steichen brought to the Colts that gives me confidence um, with Anthony Richardson was the pace of play. He played really, really fast, and we saw this through Anthony Richardson too. It wasn't just Gardner Minshew. Now we only have two games two. Yep. where Anthony Richardson played the full game, and in those two examples, you got Week One where Michael Pittman was awesome. 19.7 fantasy points and half PPR scoring. He was the wide receiver seven. And then in week five, when he was the wide receiver 37, only scored seven fantasy points. So I don't think it's a... Um, well, it was like, actually week four. Oh, four. Yeah, week, week four against the Rams. where Even it was, worse. Yeah, it was he was wide One receiver. Catch. Wide receiver 72 against the Rams. So you have wide receiver seven, wide receiver 72. So that's where I think you're, you're probably right, Andy, of... We got lucky that for you, you got in fantasy terms that Gardner Minshew is, was is a traditional pocket passer. So it's yeah, but he was just yeah, and he ended up being so incredibly safe. You know his his splits against top and bottom defenses essentially the same. His home road splits maybe a point differential between those two. So with the turning it to the <laughs> the confidence of. Two games with Anthony Richardson, one incredible, one terrible. What is Michael Pittman going to end up overdrafted? I don't, I don't, I don't think he's going to be overdrafted, but I think he'll be drafted around his ceiling. But his floor is high to me because this is a situation where he is the primary focal point in the receiving room. I don't expect the Colts to. Well, they got to pay him. Do anything. They got to pay yes, him money. They do. Exactly, and assuming I think that, they will. Assuming that he does resign, which is how most people are viewing this situation, the Colts just have to. Like they don't um, have another wide receiver, man. If they let Pittman go, well, who are they throwing the ball to? Well, let, let me just paint the picture of a situation where they don't pay him. Okay. Um, they obviously. Uh, who was the uh, the rookie last year's name? Josh is, Downs. I almost said Josh Dobbs. Yeah, Josh Downs. So they drafted Josh Downs last year. They have a, a a laundry list of tight ends in that room. They have a quarterback coming back that maybe your offense is more predicated on. You know, they didn't have Jonathan Taylor for a big part of this year too. So let's keep that in mind with the volume for Michael Pittman. If you come in here and you say, "Hey, I've got Josh Downs. I've got these tight ends. I've got Anthony Richardson, and I'm going to draft one of these electric wide receivers and not pay Michael Pittman." Because he's somebody wants to offer him a big old check, that would be their pathway forward. And I don't think that that's an un, 
a, a non-viable path for the Colts personally. Like, I don't think – I think Pittman is excruciatingly consistent. But I also think that you could – you probably have enough with somebody else. But that that – I don't know that they're necessarily going to bring him back. Sure. I think they, if they don't bring him back, the entire conversation next year is, why didn't they give Anthony Richardson weapons? Well, this is what we do with every quarterback. So you have to equip him. I also think but that we'll, they, we'll see. there's more touchdown upside with Anthony Richardson than with Gardner. I mean, you, you played with Gardner a whole season. You had three touchdowns with them. You played two games with Anthony Richardson. You, you got a touchdown in week one. The offense is better with Anthony Richardson, and, and while he lost – the season from a on the field play, he's still going to go into his second year. He was still there, involved. He's going to be better next year than he was as a rookie. I'm, I'm really, I think I'm very bullish on Anthony Richardson's yeah year oh, two breakout. Yes. Not just as a as a rusher though. Agreed. Part of that is uh, sweet Shane Steichen's pace of play over there in yes. Indianapolis. Um, Michael Pittman just four touchdowns. So if he had scored, you know, you give him seven, six or seven touchdowns, he is he would have been a Top 12 wide receiver. Yep. And so uh, a hugely successful draft pick uh, in the seventh round and hugely consistent week to week in a uh, in the top 15 there. All right. Um, DK Metcalf. Oh, man. Somehow finished the year at 16. Doesn't feel that way at all. They, in some ways, I feel like DK Metcalf was but a – just like a mist, a ghost. Mm-hmm. A memory. I mean, now he, I he I remember him. Game, right? I see. I remember him because he single handedly destroyed me in week thirteen uh, on Papa Josh's team, where he scored three touchdowns against Dallas when nobody played him. <laughs> now he's drafted as the wide receiver sixteen and finished at sixteen, but his consistency was twenty one. First half thirty eight, second half eighteen. Geno Smith pumpkin this year, sixty six total receptions. For DK Metcalf, eleven hundred and fourteen yards on those receptions, eight touchdowns, but the reception totals they were not there. Only six percent great games. I mean, I I don't know how to feel about this season. We watched it and we knew like Lockett didn't have a great year, right? Um, you know, Jackson Smith and Jigba didn't have a great year. Metcalf didn't have a great year. So. The passing game took a step back, and now you are you do have a, a brand new head coach and a new identity there in in Seattle. But as Geno Smith, we're going to find out within I think eleven days of this recording whether Geno Smith's even there next year, right? Because they have to guarantee his money. And there's a new coaching staff in place. This wasn't you know Geno's guy who was there for the comeback player of the year two years ago. So it'll it'll be really really interesting. I think. We all know the talent of DK Metcalf. We're not questioning whether he's a good wide receiver, even though he had such a bad first half of the season. I but do he doesn't know. seem like he is wide uh, quarterback proof. Yeah, I, it's crazy because I think DK Metcalf is a dominant right wide receiver. Genuinely, yeah. like I think he's a top, you know, five six guy in terms of you know, actual talent on the field. The but you're right now. Now we know that a quarterback can ruin his top 12 potential well the a we've kind of talked about it a little bit when we gave our overviews of you know how numbers are going down for uh for for offenses because defenses are now going into the cover to like going into far more zone defense intentionally trying to stop the big play from happening and dk metcalf as you would expect because he's so big and physical he dominates man coverage. He had a 2.42 yards per route run and a 32, almost a 33% target per route run. That's an outstanding number. Like those are that is an elite wide receiver for fantasy football. Against zone, the targets per route run drops down to 16 and a half percent. Where some and it's you know the the 49ers are kind of a like they have both of those where where uh, uh, one of them can destroy zone. One of them can destroy man. Where if the the NFL is shifting, like and they keep shifting more and more to primarily zone defense, it will be interesting to see if we ever. Which is where JSN would have a lot of success. I think. Yeah, but I'm saying like, do as as the NFL is turning to this, do we 
actually get another truly dominant season for DK Metcalf, or is this now what to expect? And did Did you read the the zone increase over the last four years? I have. Uh, you can go bring it back. So up. yeah. So so in twenty twenty, uh, the NFL played zone sixty four percent of the time. Then it was sixty seven percent of the time. The next year, sixty eight percent. This last year, seventy one percent of the time yeah. in zone. The so, defense is changing. Yeah. Yeah, and and by extension, you have a reduction in production on the offensive side in general, yes. not just man beaters. But I don't think Metcalf is going to be on a short list for me next year. I'll, I'll just throw that out there. Like question marks at quarter, uh, quarterback, head coach, JSN's development. I think Lockett's under contract for another year, right? Yes. And then you have like you take week 13 out, which was that monster three touchdown week. He's outside the top 20 and finish. Um, he didn't, he's not a PPR savior. Like, I think he's a player that might slip quite a bit next year. Like we saw how far down, like Mike Evans was this past off season. I would not be shocked if DK Metcalf had a pretty big slip in terms of where he's drafted. He went three twelve last year. Um, I, I, I bet he goes just slightly behind that. Yeah. I, I think he'll go a little lower, but not too much. Him getting out of the fourth round seems like the, 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 the public wouldn't let that happen. You don't think the uh, there there might be some JSN? There will be, but I'm saying you know when, when you get the just the the mob seeing DK yeah. Metcalf's name and what he has done and look look at the physical specimen. Don't that call he it is. the mob, Mike. <laughs> Stay away from them. Uh, the, the the mob, the it, sheep. It is ironic, you know. <laughs> you, you you brought it up, but the truth the truth about DK Metcalf is he did not really help you this year. That is 100. percent You drafted true. him at 16. He finished at 16, and he didn't really help. Helped, you. Just help hurt me one week. Um. All right, quick break. Back with another controversial name. Uh okay. So DK Metcalf is going wide receiver thirteen in basketball. He's a good basketball player, though. Yeah, that's fair. I think in a, in that format, that's he's one yeah. of those players that I think that distorts quite a bit. Because I would love DK Metcalf in basketball. Yes. And guess what? He'll only help me there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, yeah, well, you you brought up the fact that against Dallas, many 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 people did not start DK yep, Metcalf. Yep, hundred percent of all basketball players started him that week. Yeah, Calvin Ridley at seventeen, guys, and this is oh boy, this is one of the I don't have another. This is one of the dumbest seasons I've ever seen. <laughs> That's the best word I can use to describe it. Call he, it a Sammy Watkins. I mean, he. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's what this was. That's man. what it was. Calvin Ridley is Sammy Watkins. He was drafted at wide receiver 17. He finished at 17. His consistency on the year was 39th, guys. Gotcha. <laughs> he just ruined people. 53% bus games. Yeah, the Lizard Prince. <laughs> he is the Lizard Prince. Calvin Ridley. What in the world? You started the year and everyone... I mean, it was the quickest, put the crown on the head. Yeah. Um, you are back to what you were. Uh, congratulations. You are the prince, the, the drum, lizard prince. The drum beat from the off season. Every beat reporter was talking about how Calvin Ridley is the best wide receiver they've ever seen in Jacksonville. They He's dominating camp. You come out and you start the season. And it wasn't even the first game. Sure, the first game he had 20 fantasy points. He was the wide receiver six. It was the first half. Yeah, it was. It was just the NFL season opened its big red curtains, and it was like the Calvin Ridley show, and we got duped. We got had. <laughs> and it was not a good, fun experience. The splits, Mike. The st <laughs> Go ahead and share. The, uh, the splits for Calvin Ridley versus a top 16 defense versus a bottom 16 defense. Bottom 16, averaged over 15 points a game. That was against nine uh, opponents. 15 points. Top half opponents, eight games, under seven fantasy points per game. Just wilted. There are some quotes. Whew. Um, some talk of Jacksonville being disappointed and frustrated with the play of Calvin Ridley last but, year. And Calvin Ridley is a free agent. They said he was underweight, didn't supply yards after the catch plethora of missed assignments. Uh, the Jaguars want a, quote, big outside wide receiver for Trevor Lawrence, and that position is a priority in in on day one or day two of the draft. 
Um, so, I mean, Trent Balky did say he loves Calvin Ridley, but, I mean, you, you say things. I don't think I, – I think he's going to be somewhere else. And I don't know what that salary will equate to because the inconsistent play makes you wonder if you can depend on him as a one, and he was, he's going to want to be paid as a one. So he, he seems like the prime candidate to end up on a bad franchise yeah. as the best option. So – That'll be a very interesting topic. I mean, the court, the story of, of Calvin Ridley's year was, you know, did you – could you roll snake eyes? I mean, that cast the dice. Can you? Yeah. Can you? Yeah, can you? Sorry. But, I mean, you know, 53% bust rate, brutal. Absolutely brutal. Amari Cooper comes in at 18. Yeah, like you, you thought it was rough playing DK Metcalf, who – Busted 19% of his games. Calvin Ridley was at 53. Yeah, I think we've got back-to-back -back receivers where you're like, ah, they didn't help you. They didn't help your team. Mm -mm. I remember Al Borland after week one was like, oh, baby. <laughs> and then, um, well, Ridley didn't get him there. Yeah, if, if you had Ridley, you were so hooked from that first taste of smack in week one that you were addicted and on the <laughs> streets the rest of the year. He was in your lineup. Wait, wait. Just, wait, what was that, Jason? I'm just saying. Oh, we all heard it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. You were you got a taste. Yeah, you got it. You got hooked, and yeah. then and then, and you, then didn't, the you didn't know how to bench. You didn't know how to bench him. Okay. Because you tasted it. All right. I and, got you. and it ruined that smack. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey kids, that's golden smack. Hey by kids. The way. The um, number eighteen was Amari. Stay off drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, there it don't is. Don't do drugs. That's, that's where I was waiting. All right. Don't uh, draft Amar Don't don't draft Calvin Ridley. Amari Cooper comes in at what number here? Eighteen. I don't know. It's yes, two, eighteen. It's two weeks. <laughs> Nothing matters except for two weeks for Amari Cooper. I think you're right. I mean, I think you couldn't have had him at least for the the story. Week sixteen, Amari Cooper playoff week playoffs week one was uh was everything. You you went through what was it four quarterbacks this year in Cleveland? Mm -hmm. um, I think from watching football throughout the entire year, I think we would all agree, Amari Cooper is still a great wide receiver. Yes, his 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 body control around the sidelines and his deep play ability to come down with the catch was on display the very few times that his quarterbacks allowed him to. Still had twenty percent great games despite four quarterbacks, forty seven percent good games. That's awesome. A 40% bust was a big problem. And you didn't know what one quarterback was going to prefer versus the other. It got real good with Joe Flacco at the end. Um, he was better against bad defenses. And here we are. We're going to be back with Watson next year, and he's going to be almost 30 years old. Yeah, the, this last season we went into the year not knowing what Watson was, and some people were doubters, and some people were believers. And then – your Amari Cooper position was kind of based upon that. But there's a difference this year because last year, I don't think we were sure Amari Cooper still had it. We, we, yeah, because they got traded away for, it, for nothing. Exactly. The The Cowboys kind of said, uh, we don't we don't want you. We don't think you are worth the money. And then what he proved to me this last year was Amari Cooper absolutely still has it. He looked like a dominant wide receiver. He just didn't have good quarterback play. Now, will he have – Poor quarterback play again next year with Voldemort? Yeah. Yeah, he will. In my opinion, he will have poor quarterback play again. Um, Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, he, he was kind of the cursory case last year when he went to Cleveland of the opposite of what, like, the Hopkins situation was where he switched teams and then delivered great value for fantasy, whereas Hopkins switched teams, and this year it, that wasn't the case, uh, younger more talented than where Hopkins was with the switch. But, you know, if you look at the splits with and without Deshaun Watson over the last two years, was better without him. More targets, more receptions. Yeah. It's, more touchdown, higher touchdown pace, it's, higher yardage. It's not drastic, but it, it the numbers are better without him. No, if you look at the Watson, I think this would be interesting for people, the Watson only numbers. Is that that's a pace of seventy two receptions for twelve hundred yards and six touchdowns, and that is a very valuable fantasy football season. Yes, 
And so if for some reason you want to believe that Watson will improve, maybe you get a little bit more out of uh, Amari Cooper than you expected. I don't – I mean, he went as the wide receiver 19 in the fourth round. I'd be shocked if he went higher than that this next year. It's probably going to be pretty close. He'll probably be right around there, and I'll, I'll draft him there. Well, let's have a let's have a tough discussion here. Chris Olave of the New Orleans Saints, just 23 years old. He was drafted as the wide receiver 12 in the top of the third round but finished at 19. Had a consistency rank of 11. So when you factor in, you know, everything that he went through this year, 11 is pretty nice, 10th in the second half, 18th in the first half, 0% great games, 56% good games, 19% bust. It was mostly worthwhile to play Chris Olave. It just wasn't what you hoped for. Yeah, I mean, you you didn't get the giant. There was no level up games. Um, he obviously is a very good wide receiver. He established himself this year as the uh, definite one for this offense. There was a disconnect with him and Carr. You saw it game after game after game, and you kept waiting for it to get fixed. Now it got better. Like you just said, he was the second half consistency rank of ten, and obviously Carr had some injuries along the way. But I I think with another season, another off season. Um, you know, Michael Thomas, I have to believe that, ex you know, that experiment is, is now dead. He's what he is. But at the beginning of the year, it was like Michael Thomas was Derek Carr's guy. I think at the beginning of this next season, it will be Chris Olave. He looked very, very good. It's just a matter of he didn't have big explosive games that helped you win any weeks. And that's probably because of Derek Carr. Clint Kubiak will take over at offensive coordinator, right? In New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Coming over from Minnesota, right? Where he wasn't he calling? He was calling plays from Minnesota last last year. Uh, he he definitely was there yes. after. I just want to make Papa sure Coops. I don't. I, I want to make sure I don't have that wrong. So um, he was there in twenty one. Oh, okay. yeah, so okay. that I was, was twenty one. All was... right. So Denver's passing game coordinator last year. So he he's a couple years from and he's taken over as OC, right? So Denver's pass co game coordinator in twenty two. San Francisco in 23. The last time he was an offensive coordinator was in 21 with Minnesota. Yep. There so we go. Um, it'll be interesting to see what implications there are. Derek Carr looks like he's going to be the, oh, they're, the car they're stuck with. Yeah. Yeah. They. Now, what kind of car is that? Is that an I old? Mean, is that an old reliable? Does it's, it get you from point A to point B? It's not the worst. Do you have to change the oil more than every 3,000 miles? I, I I think it's more about the the financing problem like the, yeah, he, he, yeah. The, it's a lease yeah you're upside down yeah it's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna pay off and now they've got you want a new car but you have you're just upside down yeah yep. so you've got a couple more years of Derek Carr the the latest before rumor you can get a new model is he's going to restructure in a way that he would be forcibly there for two more seasons well force himself there <laughs> yeah. What's I, the, is that the same I don't know who's <laughs> being forced but it definitely there is a hostage somewhere Chris Olave, will you be in next year? He's a wide receiver 12 in this past draft. I will be. In. I imagine he'll be drafted be at 12 13 again. Yeah, he'll, he'll be in a similar spot since 2010. He is one of only 21 wide receivers with 2,000 or more receiving yards in their first two years. Like, he's a, he is a good player, but only DeAndre Hopkins and Garrett Wilson had fewer receiving touchdowns in that time since or uh, other than Olave yeah to me he only had five touchdowns so that was a big part of the story missing deep on these wide receiver twos we're talking about today and, and even last episode we're talking about guys on the way down like a Stephon Diggs a Devontae Adams um, versus someone like Chris Olave who has yet to necessarily break out obviously Chris Olave had a worse total fantasy season than those other two guys but next season I, I would definitely take Chris Olave over the the elder statesman. Let me move on and give you just some other important names as we close out the wide receiver episode. Jefferson finished at 29, Addison at 21. But Jefferson, the truth of Jefferson was that consistency rank. He was number four. Uh, he had the major injury, cost people a bunch of their season. During that stretch, we got to see a lot of Jordan Addison in the first half with Kirk Cousins. It was a really terrible second half for Jordan Addison. But I think that there are tons of question marks in people's minds around Addison, not Jefferson. We all know Jefferson deserves to be picked very yep. highly, and he will be great. But Addison will be interesting because, you know, does Kirk Cousins come back? 
What is the impact of Justin Jefferson being healthy over the course of the year due to Jordan Addison where, you know, we know how explosive he can be, but dipped from, you know, number 70 consistency to 45 in the second half. She had a different quarterback. I, I just feel like it's going to be a big swirling mess for where Addison will go in drafts, knowing that you're drafting a two. Yeah, for his own team. Quarterback's going to be humongous here. Uh, obviously, the second half of the year, you look after the bye week, week 13 was their bye. They had the late one. And then at, at that point, you had Justin Jefferson back and Jordan Addison there, but bad quarterback play. They, they were shuffling quarterbacks every week. Those two guys each had two really good games and mostly awful, horrendous games with those quarterbacks. I, I just, you know, it's kind of like the Jamar Chase thing. I don't blame a wide receiver for not having a quarterback that can get you the ball reliably. Uh, Jordan Addison was really, really good in the beginning of the year. And if Kirk Cousins is there, I'll be back in on Addison again. What does back in mean, though? Back in top means, 24, top 36? Yeah, uh, No, I think he'll be a wide receiver, too. Yeah, a low, low-end wide receiver, too. So that all right, and then let's talk about Garrett Wilson in the uh, when you talk about quarterbacks, I'll let you down. Um, this was not what we wanted. He was a wide receiver ten, finished at thirty two, consistency of thirty four, played the whole year. Um, consistency in the first half was twenty four, second half thirty eight, busted thirty eight percent of the time, good thirty eight percent of the time, no great games, no Aaron Rodgers. Um, this was it, there's just no way to spin this. Other the best thing you can do for the Garrett Wilson story is just. You believe in the player and the talent, but now you're going to have to believe in a one year older off of a an Achilles, Aaron Rodgers. And I think it'd be naive to not acknowledge the fact that Rodgers playing the whole year is probably longer odds, uh, and it not not because be, yeah. he's going to re-injure his Achilles, but because it, you know he's been banged up and he's old and he's behind a, a sieve of an offensive line. Yeah. So I mean, this was this was a terrible. This was a full on bust pick. It might not have been your fault. You can go hang the blame on Aaron or the Jets because I I do both. The Jets could have got somebody competent over the next. What he went out in the first uh, play of the first game almost. Mm -hmm. So you had uh, what seventeen point nine weeks <laughs> to fix the problem, and you didn't. But this was a really really disappointing year for Garrett Wilson for fantasy players. Yeah, uh, the 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 words of solace and or some optimism here would be to remind people of DeAndre Hopkins, who highly drafted target uh, or uh, uh, NFL prospect was sought after, and the first few few years in Houston were they were just okayish. He was fifty two, eight hundred yards and two as a rookie. 76, 1,200 yards, and six touchdowns as a sophomore, which Garrett Wilson as a sophomore, uh, trying to find that it was 95 for 1,042 and three. And then year three, he finally got some good quarterback play, and he was 111, 1,500 yards, and 11 touchdowns. That, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's yeah, going to happen. I don't happen. love that comparison because it was the Andre Johnson effect in those first two years for Hopkins. That made the biggest impact to me. Yeah, he was okay. the two. He was the two, where he, Wilson's the one. Like – um, cause you could go back and you could say the same thing about Devonte Adams. I mean, Adams had a, his first two years were not good, Yeah, but could, he was also yeah, in the shadow Adams. of Cobb and Nelson. So, um, look, I don't think any of us are writing Garrett Wilson off. Goodness gracious. He's, he's one of the most talented players in the yes. game. Like, like you, you could make an argument to me. I'd, I'd just take the lowest of Wilson and Olave. If I want to shoot for a 23 year old wide receiver, just let me take the one that drops the lowest in the draft and, and shoot your shot on, on an evolution and a, an ascension. I'm just a little bit afraid of, like, we know how quickly it went bad in New York. And I'm afraid it might go bad in New York again real quick. Sure. So the, it, now we know where the floor is. Jets fans will tell you it usually does. I mean, that's just the – Like, is your Aaron Rodgers' confidence production-wise very high? No. my I, I Even if he's healthy? I was a little sad – to not be able to find out because I didn't think Aaron Rodgers still had it. I thought he, you know, his his last year in Green Bay was, you know, the beginning of the end. He he wasn't that good in Green Bay. He didn't get the Packers in a very weak NFC, a very weak division to the playoffs. He didn't support his uh, wide receivers, and then he changed teams. And I 
I didn't think he was getting better on a new team at an older age. So, um, no, I think even if he plays, he is not the Aaron Rodgers of old. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Um, I hope for Garrett Wilson's sake I am, but that was my belief going into last season, and we just didn't get to see it. Give me uh, – so so we got the numbers of the truth for Garrett Wilson. We're, ho we're hoping – Anything better on offensive line and quarterback play will mean – like, he still caught 95 passes, right? He was the clear go-to receiver. They were just like – Yes, and he's so bad. He's probably the go-to again. I mean, it, but, he had 168 targets. It's yeah. hard to finish down at wide receiver 32. It's pretty when unbelievable. When you get 168 targets. So was, Jalen I, Waddell, was I throwing the ball? <laughs> um, Jalen Waddell came in at 34. He was drafted as the wide receiver 11. And you might say, okay, he missed some time. Well, how did he do consistency-wise? He was 28th, 14% great, 29% good, 21% bust. I yeah, mean, we have, this, is, this is a bust season. Well, so he, he was better than this on a points-per-game basis. He was basically about the wide receiver 22 on points per game. He missed three games, uh, ended the season injured. But when you take out the injured games, you just look about how is his consistency? We have 47 career games, and we've done this truth episode each year, and basically he's very consistently the same, which is <laughs> he's got you know around 15% great games, just incredible games. He's got a third of his games that are outright busts, and then a third that are good. He's not a hyper-consistent player. Now, this would be more of one of those, like, can he do the Hopkins thing? Can he do the Julio Jones thing where a couple of years into your career when the predecessor who was the superstar wide receiver, you know, when Andre Johnson or Roddy White say, okay, now I'm gone, can you step up and be that super consistent one? I still believe that for Jalen Waddle, His talent shows out, but while he is the two, He's not a consistent player, and I don't. I don't think he will be next year or the next year until Tyreek is gone. Yeah, it, this was you. You did. You wanted to see his ability to take over a game and one A one B, but it's not. It's it's one A two. Yeah, <laughs> believe that's uh called one two. Mm. I don't that's know. Right. If, you don't need. It the, almost felt like call, the a there. it felt like calling Tyreek just the one was insulting. <laughs> Like well, I needed I think it like one A is way worse. No, one A is like if you don't have a B, is it worse? I feel like I was. Um, uh, oh, what if it was A <laughs> one? The steak A1 sauce. Steak sauce? Yeah, that's yeah. how steaks are done. <laughs> Wait, you know the jingle? I don't know. Look, Iwata was the seventh wide receiver last year. Yes, number seven. He he caught three fewer passes than last year. But he did the inverse of the Brandon Ayuk. He went from 1,356 yards on 75 catches to 1,014 yards on 72 catches. Oh, the man. actual opposite of Ayuk. Is that a cautionary tale? It is, what? yeah. I mean, that's the point. Is When the, when you're talking about a player who is getting around 80 or yes, fewer receptions, yes. you're not going to usually have consistency. The fact that you had consistency from Ayuk this year is just surprising, impressive, um, and hopefully that means next year he, you know, for for Ayuk, graduates from the 80 receptions. But if you're living in the 80 or fewer receptions, you're not usually going to be a consistent player. There will be some other wide receivers we talk through, but not today. We'll get into it on the Rookie Review Show. Jaden Reed, Rashi Rice, Zay Flowers, Tank Dell, big names you want to hear about. Those will be part of our Rookie Review episode on Thursday. Oh, we will that. come back with the truth about the tight end position. And uh, review that. It was interesting this year. See if we can convince Jason to go in on Brock Bowers in the first round. Probably can't. Not bloody likely. And that'll do it for today. So thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. Make sure you head over to Spotify, Apple. Leave us a review if you got a couple seconds today. It helps the show. You can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy football. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.